There is now a big race on globally, not just in China and Hong Kong, to develop a vaccine against COVID-19. There are at least 70 potential treatments in development, three of them at the clinical stage, which is when human trials begin. Outside China, the US is the only other country now doing human testing, but some experts warn against rushing the process. They say doing that could result in a vaccine that weakens our body's ability to fight off the virus on its own. America's top medical expert, Anthony Fauci, has said a vaccine could be ready within 12 to 18 months, while health officials elsewhere say it could take even longer. Let's talk to John Nichols. He's a clinical professor of pathology at the University of Hong Kong. His team was the one of the first outside of mainland China to reproduce COVID-19 in a lab for research. He joins us on Skype from Hong Kong. John Nichols, great to have you back here on the news hour. So the finish line in theory should be at least 12 months away, how do they fast forward through that process? Well, normally with the vaccines, you start off with uh, small animals and then move to the uh, primates and then to the humans. But it seems with this one that they've gone straight to the humans, which uh, is a very bold decision, one must say. Is it risky? I think it's, uh, it's certainly very challenging because that's why you have to have the testing in the small animals uh, to make sure that it's safe and that it works. I think the other issue is that you notice that they're all using young volunteers. Uh, and this is actually going to be a big problem with this uh, vaccine, is that uh, because the most of the mortality in this disease is in the elderly. And in the elderly, they don't uh, mount a very strong immune response. That's called immune senescence. So the best thing should actually be to see what the antibody response is in the elderly rather than the young. So from a clinical point of view, it would be better if they managed to get a study group, a group of volunteers, people in their 60s and their 70s and their 80s? Well, that's because that's the, the target population which has the highest mortality. Because um, uh, if you remember, you know, we've got an aging population in Hong Kong during SARS, only 11% of the population was over 65. Now it's 18%. So if the, the best use of this vaccine uh, should be really how much is going to prevent the serious disease in the elderly. And this has got to be step change through a linear process. I mean, it's safety, development, efficacy, and then approval. And that's got to be approval handed down by multiple agencies in multiple countries. That's right. It's going to be very confusing when you've got so many people working on so many different vaccines. Everyone's going to be competing to say theirs is going to be the best. And so then you need to have some sort of trial of comparing different vaccines. So it's going to be a very big logistical and also challenge for all the regulatory authorities. OK, and phase two is randomised testing with some built-in double-blind analysis that comes back to you as a statistical breakdown of the success or failure. And, I mean, some people are saying, Anthony Fauci saying that process itself can take two years. Well, that, that's, that's right. Vaccines can't be rushed in because, as was mentioned you know, earlier, is that if you rush a vaccine too much and you get side effects, then that's going to have a really deleterious uh, effect. And what we also really don't know what percentage of the population needs to have the immunity or vaccination to be effective. Things like measles, you need about 95 percent. So it would be because we really don't know at this stage uh, what the proper herd immunity, it's challenging to know at what uh, amount of the population will have to have the the antibodies either through natural infection or immune or vaccination to be for it to be really effective i don't know if you've been hearing our earlier conversation here on the news uh, uh, mr nichols but we have been touching on this idea of herd immunity you know you, we've got countries like spain now yeah. easing restrictions sweden you could get on a plane, if you could find a plane to get onto, go to Sweden, and the restaurants and the bars and the cinemas, they are open because the Swedish authorities have said, herd immunity, that's the future. Where do we stand now? Give us your insight on this. Where do we stand on the idea that herd immunity might provide some sort of cover in a contained environment? Well, that's what people are talking about with this large amount of immunity. You've got these people talking about these immunity passports. But the problem is that right now we don't know that the proper amount of uh, what in the community will be effective. And so I think that's why in Hong Kong and other places, they're trying this gradual letting people to see um, how much we can actually live with uh, a little bit of infection, uh, a small amount. It's just basically flattening out that uh, sombrero or flattening out this curve to a very, very long period of time. So 
I think that's what most countries will be doing. We're just testing the water to see how much they can get back to a normal uh, lifestyle without you, the uh, ICUs and the hospitals being overwhelmed with new infections. Everyone is talking clearly about the vaccine, herd immunity as well, that's a given, and also uh, built-in immunity off the back of that herd immunity spreading through whichever country, whichever community we're talking about. Chloroquine, that's the other thing that people are looking into in the United States. We've had it's, it's been reported we've got dead people in Brazil because they tried chloroquine. The Swedish authorities, the French authorities are saying, no way. Donald Trump, the US president, is saying, actually, maybe give it a go. And they are investigating chloroquine at a scientific uh, clinical level in the States as well. Is chloroquine a possible or not? Well, this is, this is I think, an issue where it's actually the treatment is being sort of uh, led by politics, not by science. So everybody has been saying, let's get some proper scientific trials. I mean, the, most people now say the, that French trial has uh, had quite a few flaws and was not really scientifically valid. But the problem is, is that uh, it's being this whole uh, chloroquine is actually being led by you know, by the politics, and so the science is, is playing catch up. So in a normal situation, we'd be doing proper trials. We have the controls. You have the subjects. But now it's just you know people who are so desperate that they're uh, putting, pushing aside science. Um, I'm not a big believer in the use of, uh, of chloroquine uh, because I, I think the, the, the side effects and also the, you know, it's not really been proven. So, and I think the, the way in which some uh, areas are just, you know, pushing it and re recommending the uh, population takes as a prophylaxis, I think is very dangerous, especially with the cardiotoxicity which has been associated with it. OK, uh, listen to the professors, listen to the science, listen to the doctors. Professor John Nichols, we've listened to you. Thank you so much for joining us again here on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much.